DIY with Chris, giving you the tools to do it yourself. I do not recommend that you finance seat covers or any of these accessories with your vehicle when you buy it. Because we did buy this vehicle new, but we didn't finance it with it um, because they charge way too much for it. Okay, so there's two other places we looked at that were significantly cheaper than dealership. And I did go to the dealership afterwards as well and check with the parts center and I checked on the prices. I checked on the prices for them just to have it shipped to them and then I would do it myself as well as the prices for them to install them. So I compared the three different places. I, play, I compared the parts center at the dealership, um, the e-parts Honda store and Amazon. And so we compared the cost of shipping plus the price of the actual product itself um, and everything, we took everything into consideration and then we purchased the best deal. So these are all the OEM Honda products and some of the stuff that we are installing on the van are the seat covers, um, the splash guards or mud guards, the roof rails, the crossbars for it, and the hitch system are just a few things that we're installing on the van and they're all OEM. Hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing a how-to video on how to install the roof rack system on our 2018 Honda Odyssey. Uh, it should be the same for multiple models and types. We are doing it on the EX version of our van. These are two different orders. So two different orders I had to pay separately for the crossbars and for the actual roof rails themselves. So when we did purchase them, uh, we, we got them here and this is the shipping, the box, uh, the boxes that we actually got them in. And what is really kind of nice that I do like about this is that it does have on the lid here on both of them it's a quality checklist to make sure that everything is actually included in the package. So you have the um, covers and it's just for the ends and that's what both of these are. So you have the covers for the actual end pieces of the roof rails and then the left side rail, the right side rail and the hardware bag. So you can see the rails right here. The covers are in the styrofoam below and this is what they look like. So these um, end up just snapping right on top and that'll be pretty much the last step when we actually do this installation. I'll go back to the box there and then we have the actual hardware bag right here for this one. Uh, this does have multiple components in here. Um, it has a lot of the screws that we need and everything with that. And then for this other one, for the actual crossbars, we have the rear crossbar, front crossbar, and then the actual hardware bag. So again, the hardware bag is over there on the side. One downside to purchasing these items from the place that I did, being that they're OEM also, is that there are no installation instructions inside. That is really no problem though. There's uh, a few videos on how to install it and that's why we're doing this also. But past that, you can also request them from the dealer or online at eStore.honda.com. So I have actually went ahead and went on to the eStore honda.com and downloaded those instructions i'll give you a snippet just so that you can see how they look on my phone so this is uh, the actual instructions that has the components and then it'll actually go into the instructions for and you go you uh, select your year make and model and everything so these are very specific to your particular version of the vehicle so we do have those instructions to follow as well if you want those in any of your installs so we'll go ahead and get started here as we're reading the instructions here the tools required uh, that it's listing is a phillips screwdriver a putty knife a ratchet, needle nose pliers, masking tape, torque wrench, ruler, tape measure, felt tip pen, file, T15 and T30 Torx bits, 
and it recommends eye protection, face shield, or safety goggles, uh, etc. Uh, following tools are available through the Honda Tool and Equipment Program trim tool set, the plastic trim tool, and an air saw. They also have a number here that you can call for that. That is 888 424 6857. The first step that we have here in the instructions is to take some uh, masking tape. We're going to use this painter's tape and you're going to align it. Um, just take a small strip and you're going to put it uh, half of it on the actual paint itself and half of it on this roof trim that's coming across and they don't actually specify where to do it um, but they recommend that you do it in two places. So you're going to put this here. Do one a little bit further back. Once we have the tape on there I want you to draw a line just straight across it to make sure that you have that line on both the trim and the actual cart itself. And I'm going to run blade without getting the paint or anything and run it right down there. That way it separates the two. Once we have the tape in place and that tape has been cut, we're going to go ahead and start removing this rooftop. We're going to start with step one, which is going to be to remove the uh, molding of the van. So what I'm going to do is, uh, it does ask, or it does say that uh, they have a Honda specific tool to help with the trim, whatnot. We don't have that, so I'm just going to use a flat blade screwdriver. You will just want to be careful here because we don't want to do any ex uh, extra damage. Okay, we're going to start off up here, and what we have to do in order to get this undone is you just have to lift this portion up while you push that down so that's gonna release that portion so you can start working it up um, another thing is right up here these first two bolts it's going to be on this clip this clip uh, snaps like that so you're going to have to finagle it a little bit you, you probably best way of doing that is getting the screwdriver in there and popping it back. As we start working our way further back, there are going to be blue clips on the bolts here. And I've found that if you tuck your finger on the side and kind of pull it towards you, those will pop off a lot quicker like that. So here's a blue clip that you can see. And if you do that, then it won't bend your molding. The next step is to remove these clips that are up here. Uh, you will, on this very back one, need to remember where this clip went. So it's not on that last post, but on the second one up, because uh, when we go back to reinstall uh, the whole system, we are going to take a new clip that came with our package and put it right here on this one. So we don't have to save these. I'm not gonna try and destroy it. Um, not all of them come off that easy, but a good method a good method that I have found is you just grab it and rock it back and forth. And uh, if one side doesn't work, then you can go to the other side. And it might take a little bit of effort, but that'll pop them all up. So we don't have to save these, but we're going to do that all the way up the vehicle. Depending on the kit that you received, um, you may have to reuse this and you may have to use one reuse one of the blue clips. So we don't want to completely destroy these if we don't have to. Uh, it comes off fairly easy, but again, you'll just have to wiggle it back and forth because it has to come off of the threading. Now that we have that removed, what we're going to do, uh, we don't have to worry about these front two here, but on these next ones, it calls for you to uh, as you're looking up this line right here, you can see the sealant. You can see a little line of uh, stuff that they, they put down. It's the sealant. What we need to do is just around the bolts that we're going to be using, we are going to clear the sealant from directly, directly away from it. So you're just going to push that. Uh, this calls for a putty knife. We're just going to do it with a flat blade screwdriver. And you're just going to push it right away from the base of that. Uh, it's not a really big deal. I don't think that this is really going to affect anything if you don't do that, but we're going to do it just because the instructions actually have us uh, tell us to. So we're going to do it on those first two that are spread apart. We're going to do it on this next set, which is the middle support. And then 
the last two that are spread apart. There are two more after that, but we're not messing with those ones. The next step that we're gonna take is measure off this trim. So the trim, including this little end piece, it is just a shorter one, that should still be attached for these measurements. The measurements given in the instructions are given in both inches and millimeters. I've chosen to go with the millimeters because the inches increments that they're giving us are, for example, 20.24 inches, 8.11 inches, 29.17 inches. I'm not going to do the math on it when the millimeters is already just set numbers and I have this nice yardstick that has millimeters on it already. So the first measurement and all of these measurements are from the last measurement. So from this end is where the first one starts. So from the end is where the first one starts and we have to measure 514 millimeters in. Now from that first measurement, we're going to do 206 millimeters in. And then from that one, it'll be 741 millimeters, 107 millimeters, 618, and 197. Now, you don't have to worry about being right on. Uh, some of these are pretty close, but there is a small margin of error for these. So as long as you get them as close as possible, you'll be fine. So we're gonna go ahead and mark these at this time, and then we'll get into the cutting portion. The measurements for this do go right along with the actual curve of this. So if you have something completely straight, it might throw you off a little bit. That's another reason why I'm using this yardstick is because it does bend so I can make it match the angle of this to have uh, more accurate measurements as I'm marking these. The instructions from the actual website are recommending to use an air saw. I don't have one of those. Um, so what I'm going to use instead are some tin snips. Um, so when I'm cutting these, you're just going to cut them right on the line. What I am doing is, uh, I'll take that original mark that I made. And I will uh, draw that straight across to give me a good marking um, all the way across to go on when I'm cutting this. Um, a concern that I had because these tin sips sure do, uh, don't mash it down. So I usually have to do two cuts here. Now we're going to be having to reuse some of these pieces. So what I have to do is, and this does uh, kind of smash down the ridges that are in there that we are going to have to reuse. So what I do is I just come in here with my needle nose pliers that I already have. and I bend those back out. They don't have to be right on. Um, they will still work. But the closer you can get it back to original, uh, the, the better hold it's gonna have while it's up there. Um, you also don't have to worry about this being terribly clean and good looking um, because the when we put uh, the roof rails up there, they have guards that go over the end and those guards will cover the ends of these. So you don't have to worry about that. Just try and keep the actual uh, the rest of it looking fine. And then we're just going to continue doing that all the way down on all of the marks that we did. On this next step, the first thing we're going to do is reinstall this piece. So mine came with a new one, but if yours didn't, then you'll have to reuse yours. You're going to go on the, on the post that is further towards the rear, or the bolt, and make sure that this piece is also facing towards the rear. So we're going to push that down over there. What that's going to do is allow this to re-clip back onto it, and that will secure that portion. Uh, before we get to there, we just need to clip this first part back in. So we just need to lift up this front trim a little bit, make sure that's secure, and then come back and push that down and make sure it clipped. So it did. We'll go ahead and make sure that it's actually clipped all the way down and that first piece is in. On these next two pieces, you just have to line up the tape and the marks that we had already put down. So you're just going to line that up. I put in, uh, when I 
when I put these back in, I dip this outside edge down first and then go towards the inside. And then you just snap that down all the way back. And continue doing that for the next two pieces and we'll get to the rear. Once you're done, you can remove this tape. For the rear, we're gonna take, uh, again, mine came with new ones, but if not, you're gonna have to use your old one and reuse it. You're gonna come to this front post of the back two and you're gonna go ahead and place that back down. You are then going to take the block that comes with your kit, and the block is going to sit towards the front of your rail. So you'll have to see where it's at. I'll have to move this one back a little bit. For the back, you just make the lower end of this angle and you align it with the back there. Once you have lined that, then you can just drop it in to make sure everything snaps into place. The front won't snap as good because it has that block that is in there that they include. The next step is to install the foot of this center support. So it does have to face a certain way, this little lip on the back does have to go towards the inside of the car and then you just put it right on those two center bolts these are the close ones that are towards the middle of the car and you just put that down once those are down then it comes with the two um, torque nuts and you'll feed that down on top of it Next thing you do is just, you take your torque wrench and you're gonna torque it down to the specification. Uh, now there are multiple torque specifications here, but uh, this one is supposed to be 8.9 foot pounds. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and torque that down to that specification at this time and then move on. The next step is to go ahead and take your roof rail and align it up. The center bracket has to go in here. And then your other two ones here at the end, they have to also, they have holes, uh, little chambers that come down and those chambers have to also go over the bolts that are coming up. So I start off by aligning the center one and then I choose the side and I work it down until it's sitting flat Then I know it sits it's sitting on there and then usually when I wind up one of them the other one will fall into place next thing we have to do is take two more of those Torx nuts and feed them down over the bolt in here so the front and back two each front and back and we're going to torque them down to Uh, 8.9 foot-pounds also. Once we finish doing these two torque bolts and we're going to go to the middle and apply these uh, torque, um, these other torque bolts and these two are going to be torqued down to 7.4 foot-pounds. So we're going to go ahead and put all those in at this time. As soon as we have put in these uh, bolts in here and torqued them down, the next thing we're going to do is uh, take these two rubber stoppers and we're going to go ahead and install these. So it does have a little tab at the bottom. Um, you're going to want to put that tab in place first, so push it down. And then I, put the, I push the top up and it just kind of snaps into place. Next step is to take your end pieces that are included in the set. Uh, they are marked for the different sides. So you just make sure you have the right sides. And then uh, they are shaped in different ways too. So just make sure you pick the right one. It has the tab back here. You're gonna start by just putting that on, push the tab back and then just push it down and you'll hear the snap. Uh, it's got two of these white pieces right here. Those will snap into the cones. So we're gonna do the front one, same thing. Push that back tab just snap them down make sure they click into place last thing for this installation as far as the actual roof rails go is uh, the kit comes with four torque screws and so you're just going to put one screw here and one screw in that back one and then that finishes up the rails 
uh, themselves. The last thing we have to do is to go ahead and put in our crossbars. So what we're going to do for that is uh, we went ahead and took them out of the package. The only things that come in this package again are the rear one, the front one, and then the, har the har actual hardware kit. So these are different lengths, so you'll have to pay attention to that. The rear one, I believe, is shorter, and the front one is a little bit longer. Also, on these uh, roof, on, on the actual crossbars, on these end caps, this one has an R, the one on the other side has an L, so you do have to make sure that they are lined up for right and left as well. Once we have these up here, we're going to take the same um, Torx bit, which is the T30, and that's going to work on these ones up here, so you're just going to remove the old ones. These ones are pretty loose already, and they're not actual screws, they're just kind of caps. So I can use this bit to start them off, and then they'll come out by hand pretty easy, these caps. As far as the hardware kit, all that comes in it is the bolts that you need. So just eight of these. Once we have these removed, and I'm going to remove them all at this time, and from the other side, I'm not going to show all of that, but once we have them all removed, then we can go ahead and line up um, our crossbars with the holes, and then start plugging in our torch bolts. And the last step we have now is just lining up these holes and getting the bolt in there. You can see the alignment a little bit from up top. Otherwise, you're going to have somebody help you and uh, guide you in from the other side. We'll just uh, repeat this step on all of them, tighten them down, and that is it for this one. The weight radius, uh, so the actual installation says the weight of the cargo must not exceed the maximum weight capacity of 75 kilograms or 165 pounds. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. If uh, any of you guys see somebody has a question you know the answer to it and I haven't got to it yet, please go ahead and answer that for me. Uh, that's what this is for, is just to try and help each other out so that you can save some money and we can all just uh, be able to have more experience and not have to waste money and time on other people doing it. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. We're doing a lot of uh, videos on this Honda Odyssey. That is, uh, this is our 2018. We have a bunch of videos on our GMC Sierra 2500. We have some on our Suzuki Boulevard. And we also have woodworking, home projects, home maintenance, uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, whatever it is, we have electronics, reviews, and installations of a lot of things as well. So if you want to see anything, then you can also leave comments down below. And if I can, then I'll go ahead and try and do a video for it. Um, other than that, have a great day. DIY with Chris, giving you the tools to do it yourself. DIY with Chris, giving you the tools to do it yourself.